You uh, you going out for a drive, mate? I thought it's a two-seater. How are you? I'm in, uh... the, I'm in the passenger seat. I thought I'd let you have first drive. Yeah, but um, we're, we're kind of missing something, mate. Oh, what, the other one. Yeah. Oh, the steering wheel. Where's the steering wheel? The steering wheel's, I don't know, it's over here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd give this one a tester for size, and we may as well start the video with me trying to clamber out of this thing. What do you reckon? Which, comfy? It's, it is comfy. It's snug. Look, I'm glad I've lost some weight. I'll tell you that much. You have got a hoodie and a body warmer on, and yeah, but this is a I'm, summer it's, car. It's, yeah, but it's the middle. Ah. It's the middle bit. Well, at least you right, are let's doing it. Let's try this. You're doing a bit <sighs> of weight loss. You'll be all right. Look <sighs> at that. I've had some practice with the TT. You have, mate. Right, I suppose we should do a video of fitting the seats. Now, we have cheated and done one already, mainly because we didn't want you to have to watch us try every possible option to fit it. We've got runners. Yep. We've got a seat, carbon fibre. We've got harnesses. Yep. Four point from MK. Um, three inch. Yeah, yep, three inch. Um, we made by TRS. Lovely jubbly. Same as mine. Um, we've also got some covers to go over um, the seatbelt latches. We've also got the Toneo, uh, the Toneo, the, what's it called? The boot cover. Yeah, the boot cover. Toneo, boot cover, same sort of thing. Um, Rob's fitted this lovely posh Bentley uh, padding. This is the new Bentley MK yeah. design. Sports car. Not sports a kick car, car. It's a sports car. It is. Um, so we're going to go through the fitting of this on the driver's side um we haven't flip it over we haven't fitted anything yet um we've got the runners to one side so they were from car builder solutions but you can get them from like mk anywhere like yeah. that so right should we uh, we get into it straight after this intro <laughs> okay rob so talk us through what we've got this is the underside of a seat it would be i'm guessing similar to most seats you're going to buy yep should we give you a measurement because there is different measurements of seats so obviously, when you're selecting your runners, these are the semi-fat boy ones. Yeah, well, no, these are these are they're, they're a four ten wide seat. Yeah. But obviously, when you buy runners, you have to look at sort of like that, which was like three ten, and that, which is yeah, like three one five. And that's for selecting the runners. You're yeah, going to be so using, selecting yeah? your runners. So make sure that you're. I mean, you don't you don't have to do runners. You no, can go fixed position if you're the only person that's going to be driving yep. it. But. It's one of those, if track days, you may sit slightly differently to, say, a road trip or if you're going to do some motorway miles. So, But these are a twin lock. So, obviously, twin lock means both lock rather than just one lock in so then it doesn't move around a bit. Yeah. Um, and basically, you get these from uh, Car Builder Solutions, MK or whatever. They supply little washers. Because if you can see, I don't know if you can see that, on the bottom of the seat, it's not quite flat. Let me, uh, let me give it a handheld to see what we can do. We have the power. Yeah, there is a slight, not a lot, but there is. Oh yeah, here, in them because they're molding. Now I have to remember. What's that way? Cool. Right, there you go. So basically, first thing, get these mounted to your seats. Yeah. Um, if I can remember how to slide it forward and back. They're quite stiff. Surprising you just put the bowl in and turn it. Yeah, but it won't work because it goes a bit funny. Okay, so there we go. It's just trying to, you've got to get them lined up. So say it goes in there. And you also have to buy some longer, like M, M8. So, yeah. so you get a good amount of thread into your seat. Because uh, the ones they supplied, they're only for fitting the mounts to the floor, not to mount to your seat. Yeah, makes sense. And I also tapped, I did cheat, I pre-tapped the seats. They were tapped already, but I just run a tap through it just to make sure that they're uh, spot on. Yeah. So leave that one a little bit loose, just so you can get the back one in. And I can, there we go. Remember how to use it. Cool, so we're pretty good in the center of the seat. Same spacer again. Yeah, get that spacer underneath it. Oh, you haven't told me what I've done wrong. I wanted you to find out for yourself. So, guys, <laughs> that goes on the, uh, the, inside. the inside of the seat. Rob got a little bit carried away in the moment. Starting in the same position. Do, do, do. Are we filming? We are. So we now are. you've uh, fitted these the correct way around. Yep. What's next? Got them in. So... This 
just goes in. Oh. That's made it for doesn't. a wide, wider seat. So what you have to do, you have to bend it. Yeah. And it's, it's quite simple as, bend it like that, but then obviously they go in, so we're gonna to have to put it in the vise and just straighten them out. Yeah, yeah. But as long as you get it near as damn it, and this sort of thing, you want it tight. Well, yeah, you don't want it popping off. So yeah. look, that's pretty good now. I'll maybe give it a little bit of flex out, but if we go to a vise, we'll just pull them straight. So we'll go to our trusty vise without stepping on my carbon arches. Uh, And if you've got some nice jaws like this, keep them in it. And we want to go sh straight. That's one. So if you look at yep. in short, you got that? Yeah. We'll just do the other. So now they're a bit straighter. Yeah. And then obviously to put it in, give it a bit of a flex because you want it in there solid. You I don't want say, it loose. Yeah, you want it, yeah. Garage is getting tight, mate. Yeah, it is. You have to get a bigger garage. Uh, all right, needs a little bit more. Handle is now in, so you can see that you push it down like a normal one and the runner moves. Obviously, they'll both move when it's bolted to the floor. But it's just a matter of bending it, bending it, bending it, bending it, bending it about 30 times. Tip us the seat up so we can see the underneath of it. There we go. So, the they're both in, good contact, straight, nice straight handle in the middle. Um, yeah, good fix in. It's not, not rattling around or anything. It's nice and loose. Next thing is um, getting this bolted into the floor. So what I did, I got some masking tape and I put it on the two runners of the floor. So we'll do that now. And then what we'll do is we'll lay the seat in and then we can get some measurements to make sure we're square, see where we want to sit, see what sort of position you want. And then we can mark the two front holes, get them drilled. And Which basically can... means you're putting it in the furthest back setting. Yeah. Because it's not yeah. going to change. But to be honest, there's only two places, one place. Yeah, we might, anyway. you might have to move that because that might be too far back. Yeah. But all I've done is just pull them forward so I can get a sharpie in there and mark the, t the two holes onto my masking tape once I put it down. So we'll go into the car and we can show you what we're doing. So we actually have masking tape to hand today. So just see these two rails. This is where we're going to be mounting our seat. So just bang a bit of masking tape down just for ease of seeing your sharpie. My masking, tils masking tape skills aren't that great, but it's all good. We got this. So that's where you're going to be mounting the seat onto them reinforced straps, yeah? Yeah, so this is an alley floor and these are steel. So you'll drill through both bits and then obviously you'll do, um, there's like a cap head screw that goes into the seat that was supplied with the runners, yep. into the rail. And then on the bottom, I've bought uh, some big 8 mil penny washers yep. and then some nylock nuts. Yep. And then once we're finished and we're happy, I'm going to use some nut caps just to protect the threads. And yeah. Because obviously it's on the floor. You're going to hit stones. You're going to hit debris and all that sort of lovely stuff. Right. So, so masking we... tape is down. Do you want me to throw you the seat? Yep. Not literally, but... It's three times as heavy as it was before you put the runners on. Oh, Jesus. Now we've got the fun thing of getting this in without scratching anything. So... Lucky they're carbon fibre. Well, I'm worried about my paint though. Apparently, I shouldn't have got it painted because it scratches, but I don't know where that come from. We haven't been anywhere in it yet. There we go. Job done. See you later. Yeah, let's go. Right, we'll need a Sharpie now and a tape measure. I've got a tape measure. I think I've got a Sharpie out, mate. It's just underneath the, um, on top. Oh, yeah. So for once, we are pretty prepared today, guys. We like we change. said in our... We only had to do the job twice to do that. Right, let me lower this camera down a bit so we can see your face about the roll cage. Here we go. So, we were well too far forward on the back setting. Oh, okay. Oh, roll cage bar there. That's nice. So what you need to do is basically get your seat in a good position. Yeah of where you want to be. 
Um, we'll have a measure up in a minute and obviously when you slide it forward, make sure that you're not going to clash with anything. Yeah, and also try and do the gap, I guess, between the, the side, the outside and the inside, like the... This gap. Center, yeah. Yeah, the only thing is you have to, obviously up here is tight. Yeah, that's what I mean though, you, got, you, want to yeah. feel, you want to be in the center of whatever the gap you have is. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Um, and it is quite an awkward one and you want to be, the runner wants to be in the middle of that steel tube. And of course you want to make sure that they're both in the same position. Left hand, right hand side. Yep, so what we'll do now, I've got them center of the steel bar. Yep. We'll just have a little measure up of this tube. Oh, okay, you're going to level it from front to back, yeah? Well, I'm just going to check it. So it's 20 to the trim. It's 195 to the trim, so it's a little bit off. But what we can do is we can do this, and then we can also measure at the back of the seat. So it's 195 to the to this trim. And it's 195 to the trim. What we can also do, come to the back of the car, and you can measure, like, say from there roughly, so it's 55 mil. This one's more awkward. I was about to say, the problem is there's no particularly straight or perfect mm. line on this, because it's... All right, let's go, we'll go from the seatbelt harness from inside yep. the seat, so that's 60, 68 mil, and that's 70 mil, so it's like two mil off. So we'll just give that a little tweak. Problem is a little tweak will end up being a tiny bit more than... Yeah, and the then the other one. thing, guys, Obviously from, we're gonna be clear in there and we are clear there, so. Yeah, let me give him a look on the other one from above. Yeah. So you can see there's a nice gap down both sides. Final tweaks. Have a little one, a few measures. Measure twice. One nine five. One nine five. Cool. What does it look like from the front? Let's have a look. Does it look square? And how does it seat compared to the other side? Does it want to go over a little bit? I was about to say it's a tiny bit further away. Not as close. Uh, sorry, closer to the side than the Do other. You want one. to go to the tunnel top. Do you want to slide the whole thing here. But then if you look at this gap here. Yeah, yeah, it looks bigger. The problem is they're molded seats. I mean, the, everything's, nothing is 100% symmetrical if you were to measure from side to side. So as long as it's not touching, mate, I think you're all right. I would mark it up. Cool. Roll cage, yeah? Climb in. It's lucky it's got them big hoops above so you can put your head through it. Getting in and out is gonna be fun. So I'm just marking the two holes onto the rail. Loads of access. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. So, now we can whip this seat out somehow. Drill some holes in it. It's like a game of uh, operation. What were you like at operation as a kid? Not very good. No, I don't remember being particularly good. Need a bigger garage, mate. So, look at this, guys. Center of the steel bar. Center of the steel bar. And it's not too far out from center either side, obviously. We, if we come closer this way, because you see this has got a bigger gap, that's 60 mil, that's only 50 mil. If we did come closer, it would touch this side. Yeah, which we So obviously, want. you can't be center that way, so don't just go and put your thing in, measure it and put it center, because you might clash on something. So it's always best to just put it in, line it up and see how you feel. But what we'll do, we'll get these pilot drilled and yep. drill the eight mil hole, and then we'll come back to you and show you what to do next. Now I've got the front ones drilled. We bolted the seat into place just loosely. Haven't gone crazy on it, because obviously we're gonna have to take it out to drill the back ones. But bolt your fronts down, get your seat centered and where you think you wanna be um, in like. Show them the seat. movement it has still, even though the front's probably Yeah, didn't. so if you move it, obviously front and back, but you can obviously twist it on the runners, because obviously, yeah. You've got two runners, so they can, once you've unlocked them, they can move at different points. Yeah. Um, so obviously get it in, and then obviously do your measurements to whatever point you want to go off of. We went from the front rail and the back 
seat belt harness hole to mark ours. So we've marked it up, we'll whip it out, we'll drill them, and then we'll come to you and tell you what is next. Next thing's next. We have some three inch harnesses supplied by MK. Um, so at this, point, at this point, we've drilled the front and back holes only. Yep. So I did find that the buckle, this buckle, is quite large. It doesn't fit through the hole of the seat. So what you have to do is put your harnesses through the seat first, bolt them in, and then bolt the floor, uh, bolt it, the seat to the floor. What you've got is you've got two 7 16th UNF holes pre drilled and tapped. But I found that mine had powder coat and all sorts of dust in, so I just tapped them through again so the thread is perfect. Obviously, when you're bolting these harnesses in, don't forget a bit of copper slip because obviously in the tunnel, the end of the bolt could get wet. So at least if it's copper slip, when you take it out, it won't be seized if you ever have to change your harnesses or anything like that. If you're racing, obviously they will Or if run you want out. to take your seat out. Yeah, or if you want to take your seat out, anything like that. So we will get these in the seat. Obviously, you get some bits in the pack. There's some like little silver washers and they go chassis side. Um, and there's like a little, it sticks through the harness just a little bit, just so then it can pivot. Because obviously someone's bigger, someone's smaller and it needs to move. So we had to get the harnesses bolted in first. Like I said earlier, you have to put them through the seat. And obviously once you get the seat on the furthest forward setting, it's not possible to get to the bolts because they're set far, like quite far back. So you can just see I've bolted them up Use the little washer chassis side just so it spaces it off of the tunnel and off of the side down there. What we're going to do, we're going to put a nut cap on them, which we've got. So we'll nut, we'll nut cap them and then what we'll do is we'll get the seat bolted in place and we'll come back to you and show you what we've done. Next job. So like Don was saying earlier, we've got these lovely covers that cover the, um, the bolt bit of the harness. So that's obviously for IVA, but I actually quite like it. It will just protect them from water and all that sort of stuff. We've got you, our can, you can nut cap it. Yeah. But... These are just a bit cleaner. No, there's not a two and a half mil radius on that for IVA. Oh, okay. What does it say in the manual? That you buy some the guide. cover. Oh, okay. Fine. A cover or something. Okay. But that's not a two and a half mil radius. So no. Okay, cool. That's a hard edge. So we've got little washers that we said earlier. So they go like that. And as you can see... I don't know if you can see that. Come a bit closer. Yeah, it's just a little bit proud, so Lift when you put your bolt onto it, yeah. it bolt goes onto the silver bits and it still has a little bit of a twist. Yeah, so you're not tightening it down, so it still allows yeah. movement. So this ain't too bad a job, slip one through. Now what side have I got that? Mm -hmm. that's side. What do you reckon that's for? Like a mic? A mic. Yeah, that's exactly what it's for, Rob. Well, what's it for? I don't know. Is there any? They look the same. I've put them both, like, left side shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I, ge I genuinely don't know what that's for. Like a mic, isn't it? Oh, you mean like uh, if they're talking to a race driver or something, like yeah. a race team? Yeah, quite possibly. He, mug he was mugging me off a minute ago, and now he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got like a little slit in, so they can slide over the um, post, as it were, like that. Now we get on ret retrieve the one you've dropped. We get our fallen soldier. <clears throat> And you get your little washer, and then what you do is you have 30 hands. I don't say you're having a lovely time. You get time Dom there. to copper slip a bolt up for me. Beautiful. There you go. And that's a 17 mil. Bolts are provided by MK. Yeah, come with the seat belts because they're specific. Seat yeah, belts, I say harnesses. Specific thread, yeah. There are seven sixteenths UNF, which is like seat belt requirement. Yeah, or seat belt standard as such. But yeah, it's always worth tapping these because these were a bit manky in the thread, but now you can see it's literally lovely. Yeah, all the way in by hand. And then nip them. So that's tight, guys, but you can see there's still movement on that. Pull the cover over. Jobs are good, then. And that is one done. We'll get this other one done quickly, and then we will give you the finished product. And there we are. we got seats fitted. We're ready to go for a little burn. We've got one Rob horsepower or one Dom horsepower. He can push me, I can drive. But no, guys, nice job, nice install. Um, 
Yeah, really happy with that. Very frustrating. Very frustrating because you're trying to get into behind the seat and the bar's in the way, the back's in the way, your arms just ain't long enough, you, you need can, about you can five see hands. It. You can see it, but you can't get to yeah, it, can't so you? It's, it's definitely worth having another pair of hands when you do this job because it just makes life easier. Um, but yeah, nice. I like these harnesses from MK. These are lovely. Like They just finish it off. And uh, stay tuned because we are actually getting some custom seat pads made and we might even be able to supply them. So uh, yeah, if you've got these seats or anything like it, just drop us a line and we'll see what we can do. But I reckon that is us for today. What else we got to do? It's a bit of IVA prep and first start, I think, and we're there. So uh, until next time, bye for now. See you later, guys.